Hello, and welcome to this video about installing Python 3 on Linux and getting an environment set up. So, uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to do this on um, Zorin OS. So this is a Debian-based installation, so if you are using um, anything like Ubuntu, Linux Mint, uh, <coughs> any of those sorts of things, then that should be fine. Uh, I do apologize, I'm a little bit stuffy today, so um, if you can hear that, then uh, I apologize in advance. Um, so there's going to be a couple things that we're going to need. We're going to first need Python 3, we're going to need pip for Python 3, and we're going to need a code editor or IDE. So um, I've already opened up a command line here, and so there is a command that I've included in the notes, which is just this one. And so I'll just step through what's actually happening here. So sudo apt get update. So this will basically actually grab all the updates for any packages that you have. Uh, and then we're going to sudo apt install python3. And the dash y uh, at the end of the apt install is just going to automatically say yes to any of the um, prompts. <clears throat> and uh, then you're going to sudo apt install python3 pip. And that should be everything that you'll need. So we'll go ahead and run that. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, you know what? I forgot to do dash here. That's my bad. Okay, there we go. So it's just going to grab all the updates that it needs. From there, it's going to sudo apt install Python 3. Uh, I think I may have already done this, so it might actually end up being already installed. Oh, maybe not. I guess not. So there we go. So we installed Python. 3 and pip 3, uh, pip for Python 3. Next what we're going to need is we're going to need an IDE, so we need, sorry, there we go. Um, oh, and sorry, also, if you are on a different um, installation that's giving you some other sort of Linux that's giving you some sort of problems with trying to download the Debian file, or uh, I think Arch should have I think Arch already has the package for Python 3, but let's say you're on something weird that can't install it that way, you can actually come to python.org here, and you can see you can just hit um, Python 3.8 there. So, uh, next thing we're going to need. So we're going to need the Visual Studio Code. We're going to need Visual Studio Code, rather. So I just downloaded the .dev. I'll leave this link in the description as well as in the show notes. Uh, for, uh, sorry, in the notes um, on the website to get this. Uh, and so, whoops. Two of them open. Um, so once that's downloaded, if you've ever used a .deb file, and this should be pretty simple for you, basically all that you're going to need to do is sorry that, just double click on the code package, hit run if there's any warnings that pop up because this is a proprietary uh, package, and just hit install. wait for this to install. This part might look a little bit different if you're on Ubuntu or anything like that. This will look slightly different. Perfect. So now VS Code has been installed. Uh, there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. Basically, if you're in any directory, so if I'm on my desktop right now, no, so I'll just see the my desktop really quickly. And I'm just going to make dir code test and then cd into it. So what we'll do here is when you're actually inside a directory, you can do code and then dot, and that will launch Visual Studio Code inside that folder. That's one option to do it. Alternatively, you can just pin it to, uh, which is what I'm going to do. Actually, you can just pin it to your taskbar. You can't see the taskbar in the second monitor, but um, you can just pin it to your taskbar or do something along those lines, put it on your desktop, doesn't really matter. <clears throat> So now that, oh, oops. now that we have Visual Studio Code installed, uh, there's going to be a couple extensions that we're going to need. Uh, actually, there's just going to be one extension that's going to be required, and that is the Python extension pack here. Um, and so it's by Don Jamain. I think that's how you say that. Um, and so the way that you can install extensions is basically these little this little block icon here. When I click on this, I can just type in Python and we'll see the Don Germain Python extension pack. Uh, this just helps, this, this just includes some super helpful um, packages. You can also, if you want something a little bit less intense, you can also just install the regular Python um, from uh, Microsoft themselves. But I'm just going to install the Python extension pack. 
and um, yeah, there are also a couple. So everything at this point, once this finishes installing, uh, you have everything you need. The only thing you need to validate is just if you click here to create a new file. We'll just do test.py. The only thing you need to validate is that this says Python 3 something in the bottom here. Uh, all these different things here, the linter, uh, don't even worry about the linter or the message there. You can actually, if you really do want to, it says IntelliCode supports, um, requires you to use the Python language server. I would just enable that and reload it. That basically just means that whenever you're typing stuff, um, it'll auto correct it. It'll, well, it won't auto correct it for you, but it will give you common suggestions if you're trying to do something very common. So like if you're trying to type something in like a four, it will give you the code snippet for that. Um, yeah. So at this point, if you just want to go ahead, you can actually go off and you can do the entire rest of the course just with this installed. I'm going to install a couple of extra things, so if you want to stick around and see those extra little bits and pieces, you can go ahead and do that, but it's not required, so it's up to you entirely. Um, so I'm now going to go into the extensions, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to download uh, what's called Python Preview. So Python Preview... Uh, where's Preview? Python Preview. Python Preview is a really cool piece of... Uh, code that basically lets you see, as you can see here, lets you see what's actually happening line by line in your code. Uh, this is super useful if you want to really understand, and I'm going to use it to explain some stuff later on down the road when we get into some of the more complicated things. Uh, another one that might be useful is uh, bracket highlighter. Or, yeah, there we go, bracket pair colorizer right here. Uh, I may as well download the 2.0. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to install a second edition of this. Uh, basically, what this will do is it'll highlight when you have sets of brackets. So if you have multiple sets of brackets, what it will do... Oh, oops, sorry. Let's say you have a ton of brackets in, inside of each other. You can see it gives different colors so that you can tell which brackets belong to which sets. And the last one that's kind of helpful is indentation... Or indent rainbow. Oh, oops, sorry. <clears throat> indent rainbow and so what this will do is this will color each of your um, levels of indentation this will be useful much later on in the course when we're dealing with uh, stuff like for loops and functions and that sort of stuff basically what this means is that if you type something here and then you have something that's indented further down it'll just highlight that indentation level and if you have further indentation levels you can see they're all different colors so uh, yeah that's basically everything that you would possibly need. Uh, there are some other options besides VS Code if you do have an issue with VS Code. Um, you could also use uh, some of the other ones that I would probably suggest are, um, I would say, Atom. Atom is a good one. So Atom is the editor. It's also by Microsoft. Uh, it's an open source one. Or, well, it's by GitHub, but GitHub is also owned by Microsoft. So um, some people like, like it. I'm not the biggest fan of the world. I used to use it a bunch, but now I'm not a huge fan. Um, there's also Sublime Text, which some people like. So Sublime Text, I probably should have pulled these up beforehand, but Sublime Text, some people really like Sublime Text. Uh, I'm not a huge fan. Again, I've used it before. Not, not a big fan. Um, this one, I think you... I think there's a pro version as well for this, so you may have to pay for some stuff. I, I'm not entirely sure. And then the last one that a lot of people use is PyCharm. And so PyCharm, I would highly recommend against using PyCharm for this course specifically. Uh, PyCharm is a full-fledged what's called IDE or Integrated Development Environment. So this will do a ton of things for you. This will automate a lot of your code. Um, it will also automate things like creating certain files in certain ways and it'll fix errors that you will never learn how to fix yourself. And so I would avoid it for specifically this course. If you want to take a look at it later on down the road, you do have to buy it. Um, but I would take a look at it a little bit further down the road. This is a pretty high-end IDE, so it's got a lot of features in it that are really powerful. But again, like I said, if you are learning just this course and you haven't done any Python before, definitely I would recommend against using this for the time being. And I would recommend checking it out when you have a better understanding of Python down the road. <clears throat> 
So yeah, so that's everything. Uh, you could also, if you are familiar, you can go ahead and install Git. Uh, if you don't know what Git is, don't even worry about it. Just focus on learning Python for right now. Um, and so yeah, so this should, this should set you up really well for everything you need in the course. Uh, there's also, again, if you go to the website, there are notes on all this stuff. That's where I got this command from. I'm gonna have to fix this. I, I missed a dash right here, so I'll just fix that by the time you're already seeing this. Um, and then you can continue on from here if you came from the module zero video or if you're not from the module zero video then be sure to check out the rest i have an entire course uh called python 101 on my website and on youtube that will help you to learn python uh all the way through so um <clears throat> thank you for watching and i'll hopefully see you in the next episode of python 101. so there was actually one thing that i did miss with this and that is that if you are running most installations what will happen when you type in python like you'll see me do is uh, this will actually run Python 2, and so you really don't want that to happen. Um, you can press Control Z to break out of that if you need to. Um, so what? So Python 3 has been installed, but it's actually under Python 3 instead of Python, just Python. Um, so if you want, you can go ahead and you can edit the uh, your bash rc file so you can either do it with anything that's built in but i'm just going to do it with code so i'll do it to, uh, so it's tilde slash dot bash rc if you've never done this before and this will open up your bash rc file and one of the things that you can do is you can just do alias python is equal to python 3 and the other thing that i like to do as well is alias pip is equal to pip3. And so once you've done that and saved it, go ahead and close this. You can then type source tilde slash dot bash rc. And then now when you type in Python, you now have Python 369 as the default. And when you type in pip, you should see Python pip, whatever inversion number from Python 3.6. Um, yeah, one thing that I just, I, I sort of missed. So whenever you're uh, watching the tutorials and you see me typing now, if you do this, when you see me typing in Python and then the file name, um, this will not work for you if you add these extra lines. Uh, sorry, I forgot about this while I was doing the rest of the recording, but now definitely for sure. Thank you for watching. And if you did enjoy the video, then be sure to check out the rest of the um, introduction to Python series. Thanks.